Good morning, everyone. It's Katrina from PCSE. I'd like to just spend a few moments showing you some of the minor changes that we've recently made to the GOSS 3 functionality on PCSE Online. So I'm going to take you straight to the login screen and straight into the ophthalmic section um, on the system. Now, previously, I've showed you how to create a GOSS 3 if you're a performer who has just completed a site test and you've completed the GOSS 1. And from that GOSS 1, then of course you can generate your GOSS 3 directly. But you can also generate a GOSS 3 voucher from scratch because of course there will be circumstances where you will need to do that. So I'm going to show you that scenario. I'm going to make a claim and click GOSS 3 voucher. So we're going to create the GOSS 3. And as I'm a performer with this test data, it's pulled my dummy login through. Here's so my rather unusual performer number, and we're ready to enter the patient details. Let's just put some test data here, first name and surname. We then use the postcode lookup, which you'll be familiar with by now, to find the patient address. There we have it. And then, of course, in a site test claim, we need to enter the patient's date of birth. So I am the optometrist, so I'm going to save that to the next section. And this takes me straight to the prescription section for my patient's Mr. Spectacle voucher here. So I'm going to enter the prescription. So we've got, let's say we've got minus five with a plus one cell, axis 45, and then minus six. And then let's say it's a 0.75 cell this time, axis 120. Okay, so we then are going to select the voucher category, which would be A, just check that prescription, it's all in there. And then because I'm signed in as the performer, then the signature box appears for me to sign. And you'll see now that I have two different options here. So I can either create GOS3 voucher or create GOS3 claim. Now, create GOS3 voucher is where I would be saving the, the information. And that is the, the most important feature that it then locks that information that I've signed. And the patient then obviously can decide when they go to reception whether or not they are going to in fact go forward and, and have a dispense today so it would move on to creating the claim or whether they're going to take the voucher with them. So from this point the recommended advice is that the performer always clicks create GOS3 voucher and what you'll see here is that that actually generates a PDF of the voucher. Now depending on the setup of your practice you can print that if you know the patient's going to take the voucher straight away but if you are handing over to a colleague to give some dispensing advice to the patient, then you would then have that saved and they'll be able to go in and retrieve that. So if I then decide, oh, hang on a minute, I've saved this voucher, ready to do the dispense, but my colleague has noticed that I've actually entered a wrong power into the prescription compared to what I've got on the record card then what I can do is still as the performer, I can search for that GOS3. So I'm going to search the practice that we're in and we'll find the patient. Okay. So we're going to search um, on today's date. There we are. So let's open our voucher and what we can see here is I've got my minus five plus one minus six plus oh seven five and because I'm signed in as the optometrist then this um, section is editable um, so I am able to change the prescription or um, indeed the voucher category if it was going to then be hang on a second the patient was going to have uh, was supposed to have a reading ad and in fact I was supposed to select A plus A and what you'll see here is that the, the signature of the performer where I just signed earlier has now disappeared because, of course, I've changed that 
prescription section and I now need to sign again and create GOS3 voucher. So what you'll see now, if we scroll down, is that it has my signature again, but we now have the prescription captured as it was entered. So we saved that and we're ready to hand over to our colleagues who are going to do the dispense. So if I then log in as the dispenser in the practice, then I am going to search for the voucher that my optometrist colleague has just issued or created and just select the practice that I'm in today. And I'll select the patient's, or enter the patient's surname, which I think was voucher. And then we'll search. So we can see that we've got one return there, so it's easy to find. And I open this GOS3 voucher. Now, you'll see the difference here that now because I'm not logged in as a performer, I'm logged in as um, someone who has different roles in the practice, then I can see the prescription section and it takes me to that. I can check the details have now been entered correctly by my colleague, but I can't edit it, which is what you would expect. If that needs if that prescription needs to be edited at this point then or any of the details then that needs to be done um, of course by the performer because they need to sign it so i'm now at the stage where the patient's ready to go ahead with the dispense and what we then able to do is you can see here that i've got the create gos3 claim button that will take me and allow me to go forward into the actual gos3 claim if when I've retrieved this voucher and had a chat with the patient, they've decided to take the voucher with them, then I also, as you'll see, have this button that allows me to create GOS3 voucher, which is essentially print GOS3 voucher, and that will bring up the PDF that we saw earlier and allow me to print that off and give it to the patient. But if we're going to go ahead with the dispensing, then it's create GOS3 claim, and then we go straight into the patient's eligibility section. I would complete all of the details and information that are required and then move on to capturing the patient's signature. What you can see is that we've just made some refinements there to the GOS3 so that the performer, when the GOS3 is in voucher status, the performer can go back and edit it if there needs to be a change. As we saw, for instance, if the prescription has been recorded incorrectly, but of course, another member of staff can't make that change because it requires the performer to sign. And if we get to claim status, then we're progressing to a GOS3 claim. Then if we need to make any changes at that point, then we would need to cancel the GOS3 and start again. But that's why we've recommended only move towards um, a claim when it's time for dispensing. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions regarding this scenario, please do put them in the comments below the video. And if you have any other scenarios that you wish um, some support on and you would like us to make a recording, then please also add that. Thank you for watching.